matter of the people of the state of New York versus M. Robert Newland, those matters have for sentencing today. Following a jury verdict, Robert Newland was found guilty of the crimes of murder in the second degree as well as tampering with physical evidence. DA Bill Fitzpatrick is present, Chief ADA Melinda McGonigal is present, Assistant DA Sarah Fitzpatrick is present, Jonathan Bach, Dan O'Neill, and Julian Broder are also present along with the defendant, M. Robert Newlander. Following the jury's verdict, I ordered a pre-sentence report. I have it. I reviewed it. Additionally, I have received a mitigation package from the defense. My intent is to forward that as well to the Department of Corrections along with the pre-sentence report. I have received various media requests as well regarding today's proceedings and over the defense objection, I have indicated my willingness to allow coverage of today's proceedings. Do the people move sentence, Mr. Fitzpatrick? We do, Your Honor. And would you like to be heard? Chief ADA McGonigal will address the court on behalf of the people with your permission, Your Honor. Thank you. Melinda, I'm sorry for the feedback. Let's go ahead, please. Thank you, Your Honor. Good afternoon, counsel. Leslie Blunton Newlander died way too young. She was full of life, ready to move on to the next chapter of her life, a chapter that did not include her husband, Robert Newlander. But Robert Newlander stopped Leslie from moving on by putting an end to her life in a violent and horrific manner. Thank you. Melinda, I'm sorry. Go ahead, please. Thank you, Judge. Robert Newlander took away the wife, the life of Leslie Newlander, and he took a loving mother away from her children. Robert Newlander's actions made not only Leslie a victim, but her entire family, because they no longer have Leslie in their lives, and they have to deal with the pain of that loss every day. The evidence against Robert Newlander is overwhelming. Leslie's body and the injuries she sustained. Her injuries were too severe to have been caused by a fall in the shower. Her injuries were too numerous to have been caused by a fall in the shower. And she lacked the injuries that we would expect to see from a fall. Leslie's blood. There was no reasonable expectation for all of the blood. The blood on the wall, the blood on the lamp, the blood on the blinds, the blood on the headboard. Evidence of a bloody, violent attack in the bedroom. But there's no need to re-argue the case. The evidence in this case has been examined for legal sufficiency by this court, 12 appellate judges, and 24 jurors, all who have reached the same conclusion. The carnage of that scene, the blood, the spatter, the horrific wound to Leslie Newlander's head, all bespeak a struggle, a final, brutal end to a wonderful life. And then there's the adipose tissue, an incredibly significant discovery that brought the level of guilt to a certainty, yet resulted in not one single inquiry from any of Leslie's family members, some who may address her shortly. A piece of Leslie's head was found at the scene in a location 
that completely contradicts the defendant's story. And not one member of Leslie's family bothered to pick up the phone to ask how that could be. The court is fully aware of the defendant's attempts to cover up his crimes, to hide what he did in order to get away with it. Changing the sheets on the bed, getting rid of the sheets and a pillow, staging the items on the nightstand, moving Leslie's body 60 feet from the shower to the bedroom to attempt to explain the blood, and then making his own daughter witness to this horrific crime by making sure that she was there to see him remove Leslie's body from the shower. How despicable of this defendant to not merely attempt to cover up his crime and his involvement by physically removing evidence, but to have his daughter be a witness to his charade. His own daughter, whose story morphed so many times that she couldn't even testify at his retrial. Robert Mulander's case is an example that our criminal justice system works. A jury of 12 people convicted him of murder and tampering with evidence, but the defendant appeals his conviction. Neither the appellate division nor the Court of Appeals found an issue with the sufficiency of the evidence. But based upon the juror issue, they sent the case back for a new trial. And now a second jury of 12 people has independently convicted Robert Newlander of murder of the second degree and tampering with physical evidence. The defendant cannot be penalized for appealing and getting a new trial. But he should also not be rewarded by getting a lesser sentence than he was previously given by this court. He had three extra years of freedom to enjoy with his family. Three years that Leslie did not get. Now it is time for Robert Newlander to return to prison to continue to serve the life sentence that he deserves for ending the life of Leslie Newlander. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you as well. Mr. Bach, you've had the opportunity, sir, to review the pre sentence report. Uh, yes, I have, Judge. And would you like to be heard today? Yes, please. Good morning, Your Honor. I stand before the court some ten years after this tragedy began to address the question of sentencing. Sentencing is always a difficult question for the court. And I know Your Honor has reviewed the submissions carefully and taken time uh, to give them careful thought. I would like to use my own words to emphasize some of the key points we did our best to communicate in writing. My words will not be as eloquent as those of the Newlander children or the London family members who in their own very personal and heartfelt letters to the court have consistently come back to one or two main themes. What they have told the court, and they have said it in unison, is that, number one, they understand that Bob Newlander their father, their relative, their loved one, is about to receive a very substantial sentence. And that is regardless of whether their pleas for leniency are heard. Under the law, the court has no alternative but to impose a minimum of 15 years. Number two, any sentence the court imposes, even at 15 years, will be very long and difficult for Dr. Newlander and his family to endure. As the court knows, Dr. Newlander is not a young man. He is in the final decade, or perhaps decades, of his life, and he is not in good health. There is no way to escape the prospect that any sentence the court imposes could potentially be a sentence for life. Number three, the Newlander children and the London family are holding out hope for the prospect, at least the prospect, 
of one day being reunited with their father and relative outside of prison walls. That hope is dear to them. As they continue to try to get on with their lives, despite the great tragedy that has befallen them, it is very important for them, as Leslie's children and relatives, having lost one beloved member of their family, not to completely lose another, but to have at least the possibility, even at a distant horizon, of reuniting with Bob again. They have one simple request. They are asking that that horizon be within reach through a sentence of 15 years. And there are good grounds to grant them that wish. They are the surviving victims here. They are the ones whose lives are torn apart. As Dr. Newlander's daughter Emily says, quote, this is a sentence for the whole family. Close quote. Abba Newlander, Bob's brother writes, quote, we have all suffered so much already, close quote. Jenna Newlander puts it right on the mark. She writes that all she and the rest of the family are seeking is, quote, a sliver of hope, close quote. She puts this in very personal terms. She says, quote, the thought of starting a family and not having my parents around to teach my children is excruciating. It is critical to my life and the lives of my family members that we hold on to some hope of bringing him home before he dies, close quote. And Ari Newlander similarly tells the court that, quote, his father is the life raft he will always be. The court has read that in the letters we've submitted. Leslie's own brother and sister, Bud and Joanne, who are here, write separately. They ask the court to, quote, accept that as Leslie's brother and sister, we understand her better than anyone ever did or will. We have no doubt that what she herself would hope for at this point in time, uh, let, they say, Leslie wants happiness for her children, close quote. They write that for Leslie's children to live their lives, they need closure. And quote, this cannot happen if the children's reality is their father will die in jail. Close quote. Your Honor, we respectfully ask the court to keep all of these thoughts in mind when fashioning an appropriate sentence. Dr. Newlander is not a perfect man. None of us is perfect, but it is undisputed that he has done many good things for many people at many times throughout the course of his life, ranging from the care and compassion he showed numerous patients to the charitable work he performed in his community and in other communities as well, to the love and support felt by members of the Newlander and London families as expressed in their letters. We understand seven years ago, the court sentenced Dr. Newlander to a term of 20 years. Seven years have since passed. He is now an older man. For all of these reasons, we respectfully urge the court to consider a sentence of not more than 15 years. Thank you. Mark, thank you as well, sir. Dr. Newlander, this is your opportunity, sir. Would you like to be heard today? Uh, yes, I would, Your Honor. Your Honor, I respectfully ask that the court consider the passionate request presented by my family, which embraces and encompasses both the, all the members of the London Mulander family, specifically the desires which have been so profoundly expressed by my adult children and grandchildren in the documents that have been presented to you and are in front of you. Our 
And the central focus at this point is that our beloved Leslie is no longer with us, which changed our lives forever. The result has been, and continues to be, that our families have suffered greatly. I'm turning 71 later this year. And as such, I'm aff afflicted with numerous serious and crucial medical problems and ailments. I humbly entreat, implore the court to allow our families a sliver of hope, a small sliver of hope, that I may die being served by them, my family. Thank you. Thank you as well. I, I can first. Uh, the, uh, this jury, shared with the jury of 2015 the wisdom of common sense uh, that helped this jury work through different medical and expert opinions from various witnesses brought here to Syracuse from throughout North America. This jury wasn't persuaded by sympathy and they weren't distracted by emotion. Your jury in 2015 and now again in 2022 followed their instincts, and I believe they followed the law. You now, Dr. Newlander, have had the benefit of two jury trials, seven years apart, 24 different jurors, men and women, young and not as young, white collar and blue collar, people from the city of Syracuse and people from towns and villages throughout Onondaga County, complete strangers to each other, with no ax to grind, not favoring one side or your side, with no motivation other than fairness and respect for our system of justice. Two juries and still the same guilty verdict as our lives have changed so much over the past seven years, 24 people, two juries, with little in common except common sense, not one person believed that this was anything but a homicide. The finding of your guilt was the only constant, perhaps the only thing that hasn't been turned upside down during these unprecedented seven years. You've had the benefit of the finest of attorneys, not once, but twice, at both trials. You've had two different sets of lawyers at two trials, completely dedicated to your cause. They had different styles, they had different strategies, they had different approaches, they called different witnesses, but ultimately the same result occurred. Your attorneys also used two different sets of jury consultants, one for each trial, to find the jurors most inclined to see things your way, jurors most favorable to you and to your arguments. But all their efforts failed, not through any fault of your lawyers or those jury consultants. But rather, I think it's because facts are stubborn things. And when looking at these facts with common sense, it inevitably led 24 people to the exact same result. Common sense is a powerful tool. I have reviewed all of the letters of support submitted, and I don't doubt for a moment the sincerity of any of them or the sense of loss that your family and friends feel. As I did previously, I will temper my sentence to reflect their input, but I do not believe a minimum sentence is appropriate here. As a result of this jury's verdict with regard to murder in the second degree and violation of penal law section 125.25, the sentence is an indeterminate sentence of imprisonment with the minimum of 20 years and the maximum of life. With regard to your conviction for tampering with physical evidence, in violation of penal law section 215.40 subdivision 2,
This sentence is an indeterminate sentence of one and one third to four years. The minimum is one and one third. The maximum is four years. Indeterminate, that sentence is to run concurrently or at the same time. Mr. Newlander, you have an absolute right to appeal. In order to preserve that right, you must file a written notice of, of your intention to file. Within 30 days of today's date, you have the right to have an attorney represent you on the appeal. If you can't afford one, one would be assigned to represent you free of charge. It's my understanding that the surcharge previously imposed uh, has been paid. I believe that concludes this matter. Thank you. Court is adjourned.